All right, so I'm sure I'm gonna miss some steps here, but the bumper uh, cover has to come off because this inner bumper structure actually gets removed and replaced with the trailer hitch. So um, there are a couple of, uh, they look like um, this right here. They are little plastic, I don't know if you can see it. They're little plastic pop rivets. Now you have to drill them out. Uh, I usually on these just go back with a regular push clip. Um, you know, we have them here at the shop, so it's just a lot better than having to rivet those stupid things back on. Uh, but there's two of them. Uh, one right here and one right here. That gets drilled out, and then you can actually pull this back. You can pull this back here. Then, you can't see it because I've removed it already, but there's a little small, I believe it's a six millimeter here. And there's another little Torx, small Torx that goes right there. Then, right here, there's an eight millimeter that comes off. And as you can see, the, the bumper doesn't have much more to go. I gotta open the, the tailgate to be able to get access to the inner part of it. But um, once you get all those little clips drilled out and then the other little hardware removed, then, um, then you can pretty much, that's all you have to do down here. Uh, up here, might be able to see I'm not sure there's a couple little clips these clips may or may not break like one of them kind of did a little bit I'm gonna see how it fits back on there you know if this was a customer's car I would most definitely you know get a new clip but I'm gonna see how it fits on there since it's just my car and if it still fits well then um, you know I'm just gonna go back with it but if not these aren't very expensive it's just Really, it's just a time concern right now because, you know, it's Saturday and we don't have parts deliveries, so. Anyway, I'll get back to the next step in just a second. Okay, well, I kind of got ahead of myself a little bit. There was, it was so dirty. There's a 10 millimeter here that has to come out. Then once that 10 millimeter is out, then right up here, there's a couple of Torx heads. There's one on each side, one here and one here. Uh, then uh, there are two other torques that go right here there's one here and there's one here just on the opposite side in inner part of the tips here then there's two 10 millimeters one right here on this tab and one right here on this tab then there's the harness if your car is equipped with the uh, you know the backup stuff so and once that's out then it literally just slides right off so the next step is to take the inner bumper structure off uh, then we will get the new hitch bolted up and that's and just go back together with it run the wiring okay so before i take i wanted to add to it before i take the inner bumper structure off just want to show you where the bolts are the uh there's two here uh then there is one here and that's it that's all that holds the uh, structure uh to the uh, unibody um so get those three per side zipped off now i did buy new hardware i'm not sure if uh, it's, those are longer or if it, that was just an unnecessary purchase. Um, I highly doubt these are torque to yield, meaning they're stretch bolts. I mean, I would highly doubt that on, a, on, one of the, uh, on something like this, but you never know. So I'm gonna have to look up what the torque spec is. Uh, I'm not sure if my repair order software is gonna go all the way up to 2018. I think it just goes up to 16 at the moment. So uh, anyway, we'll see. Uh, if not, uh, I'm sure uh, the old German uh, torque spec of uh, guten tight uh, will suffice. So um, let me get these zipped off and uh, we'll show you the uh, trailer hitch once it's on. Well, all right, well, so I got the bumper structure taken off. There's, uh, like I showed you before, there's one underneath and two on the side here. Uh, turns out that I didn't need all of the uh, bolts that I bought. Uh, that package of bolts, I thought I might need all of them. Honestly, this is my first go around, so I was unsure. Turns out I only need two of them. So I got the uh, those six total bolts taken off. Got the hitch slid into the uh, end of the unibody structure. Uh, then I ended up popping these you know exhaust hangers down on uh, on both sides so I could get a little bit better access to this bolt right here on the bottom. That one right there then turns out the two that i needed because there's this middle bolt right here is actually not um, uh you know on that factory bumper structure so just the one two three then the extra one right here on both sides so couldn't find a torque spec i highly doubt they're torque to yield so 
uh, just uh, with my good old trusty snap-on uh, half-inch impact and a 21 millimeter swivel impact swivel uh, I think that's gonna be just fine and uh, it looks really really slick I'm pretty happy with it so all right let's get everything back on and get that wiring harness run all right so here in the video the audio cut out so I'm gonna just overlay it so right here I'm explaining where the uh, electrical connector portion for the uh, wiring of the trailer uh, goes in it's held in by little retention clips uh, and it just pops in there's no screws or anything then uh, here I'm talking about uh, you know even though that the uh, connector has a little weather pack seal I always like uh, putting dielectric grease on the pins just to kind of help give it that act extra little added protection from uh, uh, the elements make sure we got a good solid uh, electrical uh, connection so then uh, that just literally goes in the back of that then we'll start running the wiring harness all right so all right so you can see I got the bumper cover put back on uh, here is the completed hitch portion of it um, the everything goes back on like I said I use just push clips that I have to take place of the drilled ones got all the hardware all put back on uh, the wiring harness it's kind of silly how they do it they don't they have you use these little factory clip thingies that go on to the they push onto these little studs but they really don't have anything from here to here and so it kind of hangs down so I just kind of took some of the slack and and actually just mounted it back over here to this little portion inside here then got the harness ran here to the four little push clip things got it ran over the axle over through here comes around then they want you to secure it with zip ties going all the way down and right now this is where I'm at I uh, have to go through the fender well then once I get through the fender well then it will go up into a grommet into the engine bay okay so before I head to the house to finish the wiring I want to show you the last step so um, you know of course along the inner frame here it gets zip tied on per the instructions then runs up through the little uh, fender well cover here now these clips these clips here there's there's a bunch of them, but realistically, there's really only one, two, three, four, five, six or so that you have to remove. Then you can get access to inside here. Well, the lighting is terrible, but let me grab a flashlight. All right, so from there, then you just route the harness uh, next to this harness and zip tie it in place. Then run it through the little factory grommet right there. Then uh, it passes through up top, and I'll show you that. All right, so the grommet that goes uh, just underneath the little uh, fresh air vent there, um, over where the, the battery connection is here for the jump, for the jump location. Uh, that passes up through the grommet there then it just kind of runs along here and they even have a little pass through that's empty right here um, that you just kind of run that wire through so from there we just get into the fuse box so that's next all right so never mind I'm, I'm at home now uh, never mind the uh, background noise kids are uh, out playing basketball at the moment but basically, uh, once the wire harness comes uh, through the grommet at the bottom, uh, then it goes to this little factory piece right here. Uh, then you have the wires. There's, um, I guess, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven or so that actually get used. Now, this for here is plug C7. That's the green one on the top. So you just uh, disconnect that, then get your little pick tool right here and this is the uh, retainer for the pins so you just pop that loose and pull it out well how you get this out actually the fuse box has these little little tangs on them right here and there's four of them so once you uh you know put some pressure down here at the bottom side then push on this tab on the four spots and it will release then just kind of flip it up backwards then the top plug is c7 and C5 is what you're going to be doing. Now, 
I've already depinned uh, these. It says on the instructions that if the factory wires are present, then just to depin them and uh, tape them back. So that's what I plan on doing. So the uh, white orange, white brown, the light green, and the red violet all go on C7. Then on C5, you do the same thing. This little guy comes out here. Then there is a yellow wire on this one yeah. so right here so we just stick our little uh, pin tool sorry stick our little pin tool inside there and i'm gonna try to do this <laughs> my kids are killing themselves i'm gonna try to do this with uh, <laughs> both my hands not messing up here so i got a little pick tool from a uh, trusty old snap-on and kind of stick it in there to release the lock and it literally just pulls out like butter super easy super easy and of course this kind of always look to see how the direction it came out of course it only it can go in one way but you know it's 50 50 chance you're going to get it the first time so always just kind of pay attention to how it comes out that way so anyway i just pay attention to the way it comes out so it can go back in so just move that off to the side and pop this one into that spot. Just want to make sure I am getting in the right one. Yeah, right here. Let's see. Just like so. And it clicks into place and that's it. And from there you just pop the little uh, retainer piece back in. Uh, do this one for reference since I did the first one. Then when that's popped back in, then you can plug it back in. So uh, I will go ahead and finish taping these wires back and uh, then I'll show you how to put the fuse box back in, okay? All right, so I got all the wires all pinned in, the, the lock, uh, the pin locks back in place, uh, the connectors back in the fuse box. Uh, I individually taped each wire, each uh, exposed pin, uh, then I taped them back to the harness, just like the uh, Mopar instructions say. And of course, uh, left the ground wire, ground wire out, because that's all that's left to hook up. So now all we gotta do is just uh, position the fuse box back into its home, hook up the ground wire to the ground location, and that's it, it is complete. All right, so got the fuse box, clip back into place, got the lid, pop back on it. So then the last thing to do was to remove the uh, ECM cover. Uh, then right here, you will notice that there is a factory ground. So this is an eight millimeter, so just zip that back and you attach the ground wire. I'm not exactly pleased with the, the, the wire just kind of going across like that. I tried to see a different way. I'm sure I could cut something up and and uh, make something but for now this is this will be just fine I mean that's what the factory says to do so got that zip back on so that's it just pop this cover back on and that's all you got to do now is just uh, hook a trailer up to the car and verify that the brakes all work and that's it well all right well uh, we started out the day at my shop uh, and ended out the day uh, at home at the home shop so uh, I'm sure I might have missed a step or two. I didn't show every single little step. You know, hope, hopefully if this video helps anybody, you know, you have, you know, half a brain to kind of, you know, fill in the missing pieces, but you know, the, uh, the meat of the install, you know, kind of pointed things out to you. So hope this helps. Anyway, uh, like and subscribe to the channel and uh, see you later.